So our next speaker, I think, is known to many of us, Alsa Barry, um, head of content. She's responsible for a lot of the, well, I guess, all of the, the gallery content within the museum and, of course, a lot of our digital content. Um, Elsa is speaking on digital interactivity in the in public galleries and in cyberspace. Quite a title. Thanks, Elsa. Hi, I hi. I thought this would be um, a really good opportunity to let you know what we are doing in terms of. Uh, our digital interactivity um, happening in the galleries, happening on the web, and so that you have an understanding of the landscape and in terms of actually the kind of content, the output we're putting out there, as you're thinking through your projects, you could have there the opportunities of where and how you might be um, putting your content out to a broader audience. So why do we do digital in um, our galleries and online? And this is probably a question which Speaking to the converted here, you don't really need to answer. Um, I don't need to answer, but I know for, uh, I get this question a lot because as Dave said, it, digital technology is moving. It's a big investment from the museum. People say, why are we putting that kind of investment into technology? It's going to be redundant in two years. We're going to have to keep it up um, and it's fast moving. So in terms of actually the other kind of exhibitions we do, it is a kind of a much more uh, turnover of costs. And that becomes, has been in the past, hard to justify. It obviously isn't as hard to justify now because it's quite clear that in terms of actually what we are here to do, which is to communicate our science to as many people as possible, we need to actually tap into the way that people are now actually experiencing and communicating the science. And we are preaching or not preaching, we are talking mostly to a digital born audience and they expect to actually multi-layer content across a number of channels. And we know that in terms of actually reaching out to people, we need to be putting it across a number of channels if we are going to get that layering and the impact of layering that we can achieve through using digital in conjunction with all of the other channels, our galleries and our exhibitions. Last year we had 5.1 million visitors here to the uh, museum, the galleries. We had 9 million visits plus to our website. And interestingly, 30% of those visits are now via mobile. And we know from our audience research that we have a very savvy technology, uh, technology savvy audience who come here. About 60% of the people coming into the museum now are using smartphones. So we're not quite at the point where we can actually just present our content as bring your own devices because we still have 40% who aren't, but we are beginning to get to that tipping point where we can start thinking about different ways of delivering content across the board. And that starts bringing down the costs as well. So we, we don't have to always have the huge infrastructure to support um, the output of content across to different audiences. We also have um, a range of people just following in different kinds of formats now. So we have 345,000 people on Twitter. And those people may never go to our website. They may never come to the museum, but they have an interest. So we can use digital channels to actually talk to people in different ways. And the interesting thing, of course, about digital is that it's not just a transmission. So I should really slap myself for talking about preaching and talking to people. It is a it is a channel and form of communication that enables us to have interactivity and participation. And that is absolutely key when we are trying to actually talk about science and get people interested in science. So in terms of actually interacting with our science, we know and we have tried a number of things now over years which we know work. So one of the key areas that we have are our ID forums. We now have 50,000 plus visits per month to our ID forums. And as you can see from the illustration, the most popular ID forum that we have is Bugs, so that's no surprise. But the other ones, the other ID forums are really interesting too. And that ties into the kind of thinking we can start having around citizen science. What makes people tick? What will make them actually go from being a passive observer to wanting to be involved? And how do we kind of get people and generate that interest? And what tools, what digital tools can we use to kind of get that passion and interest? 
Um, blogs as well, those are really, really popular. We know that in terms of social media, what drives social media content is science blogs and also science news. So people do have a big interest in things like what's on at the museum, but the people who are coming back time and time again are looking for our science blogs. So hopefully all of you out there have some ideas for blogs and we can start putting that content in. But it's that kind of rich content, the inside story that people really want to hear about. Um, so connecting with science, as I've mentioned, we science blogs is one way that we can connect people to science and um, use the, connect the public through to science. But also, we have um, a lot of videos uh, within our galleries, online, and on YouTube. And that's a way that we can also use a variety of digital channels, kind of narrow, narrow casting um, output of videos of scientists, their projects, getting across the passion that people have, and getting people interested from that perspective. And we had some PhD research last year that showed us that actually people having an understanding of scientists and who those people were were one of the main trigger points for, for actually them wanting to continue um, and understanding about the scientific world and potentially even going into that, um, you know, going down that direction. So that's really quite key from a number of uh, viewpoints. Um, we also have had 2.1 million visitors to our Nature Online area of the website, and that is where our collections, our science, and all the kind of output that we have as a natural history museum is on the website. And so we, those are not people who are necessarily planning a visit to the museum, and they come back regularly. So there is a big appetite there for people to come and find out information through the web. Um, and 740,000 people have come to the research and curation, uh, visits to the research and curation area as well. So that's quite a, um, a, a healthy amount. And what are people looking for? So last year we did um, a, a poll when we were looking at the audience research going forward to how we start thinking about redesigning our website. This is a cold poll because it was 2,000 people. 60% said that they were interested in evolution. Um, we had 54% saying that they were interested in sustainability and the umbrella of things that sustainability is actually capturing there. And 40 48% said that they were interested in biodiversity. So there's a quite good percentages. There is an appetite out there for people to understand um, more about those areas. And I think what we are looking for is how we can use a number of digital channels to actually feed that appetite and people's interest. So in terms of engaging our visitors within the galleries, we've been building that up and learning lessons over a number of years. So I think essentially it started in DC1, that was slightly before my time, um, but the first kind of digital interactives were, were within that gallery of significant amount. Um, then we went on to build two, DC2, uh, which was 2009, and I think there's a lot of lessons learned there about how people are using interactivity in galleries, but also how we actually develop and um, outsource those for development. Um, but amazingly, four years on, they are still fairly robust and they are being used and they are still an attraction. So the content narrative within those has stood the test of time. Uh, then we've gone on um, past that period to look at, um, sorry, I'm going to have a look at this, uh, images of nature. So images of nature, which we did uh, to 2011 and we started with Nature Plus in the cocoon. We've built up now so images of nature um, also has the Nature Plus within it and then we've taken that forward to delivering treasures. Treasures is the first time we really finessed our digital labels and I'll come on to that in a minute and then going forward we have volcanoes and earthquakes which we're refurbishing opening this year and next year WPY um, the 50th anniversary. So on each of those iterations, we are learning more about our audiences, we're learning about what works in the galleries, and actually we are doing things which other organizations are quite interested in how we are putting that out, what our lessons learned are, and how we've achieved that. So um, 
going forward in terms of treasures, um, I think that the key thing about treasures which has been interesting is the digital labels that we have done. And that's a really good way of actually giving in more information that people can link out to which is really accessible to a wide public because we have to think all the time in our galleries we're talking to a wide public we're not just talking to a really quite niche audience and it also enables us to update those labels going forward also of interest is the fact that a lot of people are using mobile to actually access as I said 60% um, of our visitors are using um, have smart phones now and so we're using mobiles to access information and that and we're keeping a, a watching eye on that to see where the trend is going and how we can actually develop that going forward um, and also things like turning the pages so turning the pages has been really important for us in terms of enabling people to have access to very rare documents that they obviously can't handle we've done have it in the cocoon and we've also got it within the treasures gallery and I think it's something that potentially the library could be looking at going forward in terms of the redevelopment of that um, in more public spaces so it's it is a very um, simple really simple tool but actually um, always gets people quite intrigued and the next one gallery as I said that we're developing is the volcanoes and earthquakes gallery and there's a range of new technology we're putting in that everything from information kiosks we're going to have a build of volcano we're having a live earthquake um, map which will actually hopefully be live with live data quizzes um, and also we will be using nature plus in that as well for people to bookmark information and we are also developing a mobile app for schools which I think will be a good way of testing how schools are coming into the building using mobile apps to actually extend their lessons and we'll be working with a number of schools to actually create that um, in terms of social media, we have channels on all of the social media channels. So we have an NHM channel for YouTube, for Facebook, and for Twitter. And we had about um, we had 900,000 video views so far on YouTube, 175,000 likes, and as I said before, 345,000 followers on Twitter. And we have a range of different videos we put up on YouTube. Uh, the team do quite a, a range of kind of looking at complex interesting subjects as well as things which we know people will truly love and if you are thinking about the kind of content that you want people to really look at the top favorite currently is the flesh eating beetle video so if you want to go for gore and something which is kind of unusual and weird that will actually get people's attention but we do have a range there I just wanted to talk a little bit about Nature Plus and in terms of Nature Plus when we launched that originally uh, with the cocoon in 2009 we now have 61,000 registered users and we've had over a million and a quarter um, visits to the Nature Plus site since launch and the thing is that is quite uh, that's quite really quite positive because it's quite a commitment to go to Nature Plus um, and also we know that people who go there return time and again so those are the people who are actually either saving their content in the galleries going online looking it or they are um, or they are actually joining the bug forum and joining in the bug forum you can look at the bug forum but if you want to join you join nature plus so it's actually a way of extending and building our community which is one of the key reasons that we are also developing digital at the museum to be able to enable us to do that the other reason that we are looking at digital within the museum obviously is accessibility we're launching a multimedia tour on Samsung devices as a pilot um, and that will actually be a, both a family tour and an adult tour and it will be looking we're looking at launching that in the autumn so that's another and then if that's successful we will be doing that in multiple languages so beginning to scoop up the 50 percent plus international visitors that we have we have coming to the museum as I said before um, ID 
is one of the key ways of getting people interested. We've been working um, with the Smithsonian to develop the LeafSnap app, and it's uh, the UK ID key. It's built off the urban tree survey that we started doing a few years ago. And within that, we've worked with here at the AMC, um, we've worked with Smithsonian, and they're working with a number of universities in the States. And they will have 200 UK um, trees within that app. And we would have launched it earlier, but we blame the weather. So we didn't quite have the leaves we had expected. Um, finally, just a quick word about the website. Um, as we know, we are looking at a website redesign. The website now is 10 years old, which I think, you know, it's done amazingly well. It was past its sell-by date about five years ago, um, but it has, it's still the same design as 2004, and people have moved on. So it's kind of coping and creaking, but we know it absolutely needs a redesign. Since launch, it's had um, 50 mil, uh, 90 million visits and 45 million unique visits. So it actually has done that thing that we want, which is actually extending our reach and getting more people to know about us. And last year we had 9.4 million visits to the website and we had 44 million page views. And I think one of the important messages to come away from that is that although the website is really creaky, you can't find anything because it's 10 years old and it's grown past its you know, necessary um, functional ability. What people always say is it's got fantastic content on it, and we do have people coming back. And I think that every one of you can actually help contribute to that content, and we have a really fantastic repository there of information that people are that that lasts and so although we need to be culling and getting rid of things there's some also some real gems there that we need to hang on to because they've actually built up a history and really interesting information over a 10-year period so what next um, we have a whole range of things that are coming up, a number of projects. We're looking both at the website redesign, we're looking at e-commerce and the development of e-commerce coming up this year. As Dave mentioned, the CRM system that's coming in will be able to enable us to capture data and actually help um, tailor journeys for people if they so wish and understand who our audiences are. We have a PhD student starting this year who is actually going to look at how people learn in a digital environment so we can start feeding that back into our learning programs which is really exciting. That's a collaboration with King's and of course we have the, the we're going to be re-looking at the Nature Plus what we can do with that, how we can develop that community more, and also, of course, the website redesign, which is a big chunk of work. And we are now, because we are one joined up department, we are also looking at evaluation and how we can put evaluation of what we've done and actually get that loop back in in a, a much clearer way. So it's a really exciting time ahead, and um, I hope that you really want to be involved in developing digital content for a broad range of publics using the variety of channels I've talked about. Thanks. Thanks very much, Elsa. Thanks. Is there one question? We're running a little over time, but is there one question for Elsa? Does anyone want to raise any issues that touch on anything that she's... No? Okay, then I think we'll move on.